Now, um, these configuration items, these are our Lego blocks. We haven't pushed it out to anybody. So the very next thing that we need to do is we need to go through and we need to create what is called a configuration baseline. What a configuration baseline is, is it is a variety of our Lego blocks. Oh, this configuration item and this configuration item and this configuration item. And we put them all together into a configuration baseline. And this baseline can have a bunch of configuration items. It can have one configuration item in it if you want. You can have a bunch of them in there if you like. But I can also take a configuration baseline and have another configuration baseline added on top of that, and another one added on top of that, and another one added on top of that, and another one added on top of that. Um, and then once I have this configuration baseline just set up exactly the way that I want it, then I will push it out to a collection. And uh, this collection can be dynamically assigned, it can be based upon attributes and all that, or I can manually assign it and say, oh, this is for sales. You're gonna be in the sales. It's not that you have a different machine, it's just that we're going to designate this machine as a sales machine. We're going to directly assign you to a collection. And then I can apply this configuration baseline to that collection. So then they'll say, oh, do you have the applications? Well, let's put the applications. Oh, do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have this? And then I can get all the reporting back that tells me whether or not all of my sales machines are, uh, are good to go. So um, what we want to do is, is we're going to go through and we're going to actually do the rest of the chapter pretty much demo. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a lot of demos in here, which is pretty cool. But we're going to go through and we're going to build our configuration baseline. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to go ahead and close out of here. And this is over on page 581. Um, so we have a configuration baseline. There could be other configuration baselines that we can deploy it to collections. So we're going to get into assets and compliance. Then we have our compliance settings, which is right here. And here we have a bunch of different configuration baselines, or I'm sorry, configuration items, and we want to put them into configuration baselines. Now, uh, inside of here I already have one, but we're gonna go ahead and make a brand new one. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say create a configuration baseline. And so now we're off to see the wizard, we're gonna give it a name, we're gonna call this one E-N-G-I-N-E-E-R-I-N-G-M-A-N-A-G-E-R, -E 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 engineering manager, B-A-S-E-L-I-N-E, -E, desktop. So we know that it is for our engineering managers, it is a desktop, and then we have our various configuration items that we wanna be able to go through and add. So I'm gonna say add, and I can do a configuration item, I can do software updates, and I can do configuration baselines. So if I already have a configuration baseline, I'm gonna select that. So I'll say configuration baseline, the one that I have here is engineering check. I'm gonna go ahead and add it. So everything that I have inside of this uh, engineering baseline is going to be applied to this particular machine, this particular uh, configuration baseline that I'm making. So you can have a baseline that has a bunch of other baselines. Now we're saying that this is engineering managers and we're assuming that engineering managers need to have the same configurations as the engineering workers plus some additional stuff. And that's, that's the, what we're doing. If it was just the engineering workers, I'd just say, hey, here's the engineering baseline. But since it is now an engineering manager, I want them to have the, the, the basic stuff plus an additional component. So it shows you how you can take and layer not only configuration items when you're pushing this stuff out, but you can take baselines. Oh, this is our laptop baseline. Oh, this is our Dell laptop baseline. Oh, this is our Dell laptop baseline with solid state hard drive. So you can get as berserk as you want. Oh, and he also happens to not only be a Dell laptop with a solid state hard drive, but he also happens to be a marketing manager and he has to have this application, that application, and so we can add those as well. So we've added our, our other baseline, but we wanna add some more stuff, so I'll say add. I wanna grab a configuration item. Here's all the configuration items. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that Microsoft Mathematics and we'll also go ahead and add Chrome. Now, what if some of these things were in the other configuration baseline? Hey, no problem, they'll, uh, they'll be here and. It knows that, oh, I have this configuration item and it's also in this baseline, they're both in here. So now it's just a single configuration item. So it's got some intelligence associated with it. So then we'll say, okay. And so now I've added baselines, I've added applications. Um, I can also do software updates. If there's software updates that we have, I can go in and I can make sure that, uh, yes, we must have this critical software update for a Windows server. In fact, it has to be this one right here and we'll say okay. And so that, it has to be added on there as well. <laughs> and uh, then I can go in, I can say add, 
Uh, we've already done configuration baselines. Then we can do our categories. We're going to add this one to engineering. I'm going to make a new category. We're going to call this one engineering managers. E-N-G-I-N-E-E-R-I-N-G-M-A-N-A-G-E-R-S. That way we can find all these settings if we need to. And I will also make it part of engineering tools as well. So we'll say okay. And then we'll say okay. And now I have a brand new configuration baseline. So uh, we've added all of these pieces in here and they talk about this on page 582. Um, you can go in, you can add software updates. You, uh, when you're adding these software updates, what you're doing is you're adding software updates to the uh, whoever, whatever collection I add this to, I haven't added compliance checks. So when I said, oh, software updates, I'm not saying, oh, by the way, you, uh, you have to check for this compliance. No, I'm saying that you have to have the software update. So we've added that. And uh, page uh, three, uh, 380, or 583, he goes through that as well. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, over on page 584, they talk about how you have configuration baselines and you add additional configuration baselines. And by the way, when you do these configuration baselines, you can say, is this a, a required application or is it an optional application? Um, if you have it as required, you will fail compliance check if you don't have it installed. Simple as that. If you don't have it, we don't care how it's, well, it's not installed, so you, you fail. Or we can say, if you don't have it, that's okay, it's optional software. But if you do have the software, then it has to have these particular settings. And that'll be the compliance. If, if you don't have these particular settings, then that'll be reported back as not being in compliance with whatever severity it is that we set up for that individual configuration item. So um, let me go ahead and show you. Uh, if I go back here, I can go into my configuration items. Inside the configuration items, I can bring up the properties of it. And inside the properties, um, I can uh, make the changes that I want. So for example, here we have our settings. So we can say, hey, is a Chrome set up? So I can say edit. And inside of here, I can uh, change all the components. I can also change the compliance rules if necessary. So I can go in here and I can edit that. And I can say, uh, report non-compliance if it's not found. So even if we're checking it, we don't necessarily have to report non-compliance that's in there. Um, they say uh, required, optional, and prohibited. Required means it has to be installed. If it's not installed, it's just gonna say that you're not in compliance. That's what uh, the middle of page 584 is. Um, when they talk about optional, it says that if, you're not, if you don't have the application installed, we don't care, that's fine. But if you do have the application installed, it has to be with these particular settings. And if you don't have these particular settings, again, compliance item, it'll say report it or not report it. And if we report it, this is the severity level. Um, the last one that we have is prohibited. With prohibited, we say that you're not supposed to run this, this uh, software. And one of the big things that we can do with prohibited is version control. If you're supposed to be running version 3.5 of the software and you're running version 2.5, I can say, oop, you're out of compliance because of the, uh, the wrong version that we have. Now, um, so we have our configuration baseline with all its configuration items. I've gone through it, I've made changes to it as necessary. But now what we need to do is we need to assign this configuration baseline to our clients. And this is over on page uh, 585. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're inside of assets and compliance. Man, itchy nose. Assets and compliance. We have our compliance settings. We have our configuration baseline. I'm going to right click on it. And uh, once I right click on it, I can go in and I can say that I want to deploy it. And then it's gonna say, all right, well, uh, let's see. We have uh, this configuration baseline. Did you want to add some more configuration baselines to it? And if I did, then I could go ahead and say, yeah, you know what, that's actually a good idea. I could add that one as well. So you can add, you can remove configuration baselines. I can say, hey, if, uh, if you're not compliant, do I want you to remediate it? And this is where I would go in and it says, hey, do you have this application? Do you have that application? Do you have this setting? Do you have that setting? And if I don't, and I have something that allow me to remediate it, whether it's a script or application software or whatever, then I could go ahead and do that. So I could say, uh, if I am going to do remediation, does it have to occur only in a maintenance window? And by default, 
The answer is yes, it has to occur during a maintenance window, but I can say, hey, you know, um, if we need to do it right now, we can do it right now. I can also generate an alert. Uh, this alert will be if, when I push this out to the collection, what percentage is not compliant? So I can say if our compliance is below 90%, so many days into the future, so I can go in here and I can say, ah, oh, we're gonna say, eh, we'll say a couple of weeks uh, at a certain time. If I'm below 90%, then we'll go ahead and do an alert. Now this alert is just a normal configuration manager alert. It's not, I mean, we, we have handling and all that, but if I wanted to, if I'm running system center operations manager, I could have this be an operations manager alert. And operations manager alerts are way more sophisticated because they can hook up into System Center Orchestrator. It allows you to automate a whole bunch of stuff. You can have it automatically do help desk tickets, automatically assign it to technicians, automatically go through and push new software. Heck, you could reinstall the entire operating system. Yeah, if you have a fully flesh system center uh, environment where you have um, orchestrator and data protection manager and uh, everything, boy oh boy, <laughs> operations manager, virtual machine manager, uh, you can really automate the process out of this. So if you do have operations manager, do operations manager alerts as well. Uh, if you still want to do system center alerts, you can, but operations manager alerts, oh boy, are they really, really good. I can also go in and identify who we're going to collect, uh, what collection we're going to push this out to. So I'm going to hit browse. And I don't have tons and tons of collections. Um, and uh, this is set for users. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into device collections. And we're going to go ahead and grab our line of business server. So that's our line of business server. Uh, compliance validation schedule. How often do I check? We have a simple schedule, which is once a week. Or I could do a custom schedule and it is the exact same custom schedule stuff that we saw before. So we're just gonna go ahead and say once a week, and I'll say okay, and now it has been uh, pushed out.